the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is your top human rights organization review. I'm your host, Bryce Dolan. Today on the show, we're going to look at five different top human rights organizations and look at the top stories from each one of their websites. To begin our show today, Human Rights Watch reports that hate crimes are spiking and elected leaders are rejecting basic standards of human rights. It is the darkest decline in global values Human Rights Watch has seen in 38 years of standing up for human rights. None of us can afford to stay silent. So Human Rights Watch is building a national effort to hashtag call it out, to fight back against the people who attack us and defend the basic values that define who we are. The idea is simple. When you see something, say something. It's up to each of us to call out intolerance by reporting racist, sexist, and homophobic attacks and building a national call to fight against hate. Now, Human Rights Watch just set up a text-based system that allows you to easily report incidents of hate in your own community. Hashtag call it out when leaders in word or deed cross the line. Human Rights Watch will need thousands of people to sign up to make a difference. The more stories they collect, the more they can draw attention and resources to combat hate. And most importantly, Human Rights Watch can show that wherever they are, they are not afraid to speak up and hashtag call it out when human rights are under attack. When you share your story with Human Rights Watch, they will pass it on to the SPLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center. They are producing up to the minute analysis of the reports and others coming in from around the country. Human Rights Watch will use the information you provide to track and analyze the occurrence of hateful incidents and hate crimes to identify research priorities and ways to combat hate. Human Rights Watch may reach out to a limited number of individuals who report in order to follow up on the incidents reported. So for future reference, or if you would like to report a hateful incident or hate crime, text call it out to the number 82257. That was call it out to the number 82257. Help build this national effort with the hashtag call it out. Next, an urgent declaration has been issued today by more than 200 civil society groups from around the world, urging the UN General Assembly to take action regarding the war in Syria. Shireen Tadros, head of Amnesty International's UN office, said, It is becoming clearer every day that the UN Security Council has failed the Syrian people. There have been almost half a million deaths and each one is a stark rebuke of the Security Council, the supposed guardian of international peace and security, which has allowed a political deadlock to stand in the way of saving lives. This is why we, along with 224 civil society organizations, are urgently calling on UN member states to take action and request an emergency special session of the UN General Assembly to demand an end to all unlawful attacks in Aleppo and elsewhere in Syria. 
they must call for immediate and unhindered humanitarian access so that life-saving aid can reach all those in need. UN member states can and should use all the diplomatic tools at their disposal to take action towards ending the atrocities in Syria. The inaction we have seen over the past five years is a shameful chapter in the history of the Security Council. That was said again by the head of Amnesty International's UN office, Shireen Tadros. So Amnesty International, along with 224 other civil society organizations, call on the UN General Assembly to do what they can to end this Syrian conflict. They're tired of the UN Security Council, the UN Security Council's inaction. So they want something to be done and they're putting pressure on the UN General Assembly. So hopefully this will help bring a swifter or quicker end to the Syrian conflict. Next, Human Rights Foundation, or HRF, condemns the convictions of 19 activists for conducting a peaceful demonstration, demanding an official explanation for the presumed extrajudicial killings of fellow activists. Human Rights Foundation calls on the Gambian government to vacate the convictions and release them immediately. The court declared the activists, including prominent opposition leader Mr. Darbo, guilty of unlawful assembly and conspiracy. The arrest and conviction of Mr. Darbo and the other 18 activists is arbitrary, unlawful, and, viol and in violation of Article 25 of the Gambian Constitution and Article 9 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ratified by Gambia in 1979, said Javier El Haig, Chief Legal Officer of Human Rights Foundation. With its actions, Gambia has failed to comply with its own constitution and has also failed to observe its obligations under international law. The convictions of Mr. Darbo and the other activists should be vacated and all of them should be released immediately, he added. Now in April 2016, Mr. Darbo and several other activists started a demonstration demanding an official explanation for the arrests and alleged extrajudicial judi killings of numerous activists and members of the United Democratic Party, who at the time were calling for electoral reforms in anticipation of this year's presidential election. Among the demonstrators was Soyo Sandang, a youth opposition leader rumored to have been killed in custody at the time. Shortly afterwards, Gambian armed forces violently dissolved the demonstration and arbitrarily arrested Darbo along with the other activists. On July 20, 2016, the, heart of, or the High Court excuse me, of, the Ga of Gambia found the 19 activists guilty of unlawful assembly, riot, riotous interference of vehicles, holding a demonstration without permit, disobeying orders to disperse, and conspiracy. Now for more than 20 years, the Gambian president dictatorial regime has imprisoned, mistreated, and even killed opposition and pro-democracy activists. In an outrageous media interview, the Gambian president recently went as far to consider it common for people to die while in custody in Gambia, said Thor Halverson, president of Human Rights Foundation. The president must stop the ongoing brutality against civil society and immediately release Mr. Darbo and all other political prisoners, Halverson added. So this group of activists was just demonstrating, protesting the killings of the unlawful killings of other activists, and they were arrested, charged with these various charges of rioting, riotous interference of vehicles, holding a demonstration without a permit, failing to disperse. And now they are sitting in custody right after the president recently has said, oh yeah, it's common to die in custody. There's a chance that these 19 individuals could all die while in custody in Gambia if not released immediately. So we stand with Human Rights Foundation and call for the release of those 19 activists. Now the execution of Yakovitsky on November 5th, 2016 
is the fourth execution in 2016, making it the highest number of executions per year since 2008 in Belarus. Now, all four executions took place after the EU lifted in February the restrictive measures imposed on Belarus for human rights violations. The FIDH, the International Federation for Human Rights, and its member organization call on the international community to use all diplomatic le leverages to prompt Belarus to announce an immediate moratorium on the death penalty as the first step towards the abolition. Now in Belarus, the public is not informed of executions. Moreover, pursuant to the Belarusian legislation, relatives of the, of the three executed on November 5th were not notified neither in advance of the execution nor immediately thereafter. So the relatives of the executed don't get told they're gonna be executed, but then get told they're executed after it's done. Legislation also prohibits handing over their bodies to families. Previously, the UN has qualified such practice as torture and ill treatment of death convicts' relatives. I can't imagine one of my loved ones being taken away in custody and then let alone being told a week later that they have been executed after, it's, after they have been executed and then not being able to lay their body to rest. That is just crazy to me. I think we need to not, the EU needs to reinforce those restrictions back on Belarus because this has happened now since those restrictions have been restrictions have been lifted since February and like the UN said this is a form of torture to the relatives of those death convicts so we'll keep an eye on Belarus and hopefully something will change for the better there shortly now to end our show according to Protection International the UN Human Rights Office for Southeast Asia expressed concern about the number of failed prosecutions involving murder cases of land 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 rights activists in the south in the south of Thailand amid increasing restrictions on rights activists. Now we touched on this in an earlier segment. These land rights activists, these uh, these people who own these lands in Thailand, are being shoved off by the government after they've been on these lands for numbers and numbers of year, years, and they're being prosecuted. Speaking after the Region 8 Appellate Court in Surat Thani upheld a decision of the Provincial Court on March 15th to acquit the sole suspect accused in the 2015 killing of a land, land rights activist. OHCHR's acting regional representative, Laurent Malin, said lack of accountability was becoming a matter of increasing concern. The court cited lack of evidence in the case against the suspect charged over the killing of the land activist. Four people who have been involved in seeking community land title over land that was reportedly encroached by large-scale companies in the area have been murdered since 2010. None of the cases have been solved. On April 8, 2016, a witness to the land, the land right activist murder, murder case and a relative of the victim was wounded after being shot eight times. The UN Human Rights Office for Southeast Asia has requested the Department of Special Investigation look into this disturbing pattern. It is important that the government undertakes impartial, independent, and thorough investigations in all cases of killings and attempted murder in accordance with Thailand's commitment at its last Universal Periodic Review in Geneva. Since the start of the year, at least 15 human rights defenders, including eight women, have faced criminal charges in relation to their work. The UN Human Rights Office urges the government to ensure the safety of all human rights defenders and to drop all criminal charges against them. So at least they're going to investigate this disturbing pattern of events, these land rights activists who go to defend their defend the land defend these landowners and they get killed or witnesses of these activists being killed are getting injured this gal was shot eight times the vic she was the relative of the murder victim and she was going to testify and because she was a witness she just happened to be shot eight times i'm glad that they sent the department of special investigation there to really look in 
to this this scenario because this is just sounds like something out of a horror movie now it's great to know that because this has happened there is something going on you know the UN could just sweep it under the table and say hey oh well sorry Thailand sorry land act sorry land rights activists but luckily something is underway and hopefully something for the better will be happening soon now ladies and gentlemen you can find the links to all these articles below in the description I encourage you to check them out in their entirety. If you click on the links, it'll take you directly to the article on the respective websites. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, give us a like on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter, whichever you would like to do. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That does it for your top human rights organization review. I was your host, Bryce Dolan.